Okay, we will have a couple folks show up soon. Welcome to the November 20th, 2019 meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. As always, we begin with general public comment. No. In that there is none, we'll move to two sets of minutes to approve. The first is April 3rd, 2019. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, I have a question. Oh, okay, never mind. Yes, I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, second? Second. Okay. Uh, discussion? Martha? Um, the, on the last item, I, I, it just someone could remind me, uh, David had suggested that we uh, may not want to fund projects that include matching work by the House of Correction inmates. Was that for labor practices? Uh, yes. Yes. That's what I thought. Right. That, that was it. Any other discussion on that? Uh, all in favor? All right. Uh, minutes of October 2nd, 2019. Motion to approve. So moved. Okay, second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Just a couple thing, things on uh, my chair's report. The first is I had the good fortune opportunity to go on November 7th, I think it was the Thursday after our last meeting, to Forbes Library for the window tour. Um, and if you haven't been there lately, uh, I mean, I had the opportunity just to sit outside and stare at the building, which I don't think I've ever done. And uh, not only are we fortunate to have such a, a wonderful librarian and a beautiful resource, but it, I mean, it really is a spectacular building. And it's like, a, you know, the, with the windows, people are, staff are more comfortable, the collections are in better shape, the utility bills go down, and it's just beautiful space. So we should feel good about the work that, that we did there. Um, it's really, it's really good stuff. And I think they're pretty much done. There's some lower casement windows that don't fall into the historic preservation thing. They've got a little bit more, but really the shell is, is good to go. And we put a lot of money into this. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was, I think like perhaps some of you, I've been sort of glued to the TV, uh, watching a committee, uh, uh, the House Intelligence Committee, um, and sort of reflecting on the role, role of democracy and the role of committees. And, uh, and I think the decisions that the House Intelligence Committee are probably a little more momentous than the, <laughs> than the decisions that we make in our committee, but just reflecting how uh, important the decisions that we make in our committee are to, this, to the folks in Northampton. And uh, we put a lot of work in, and. Uh, and this is democracy in action. And I think it's easy to be cynical and angry and upset over the way that certain committees handle themselves, but not ours. And one thing that always keeps me going and optimistic is the good work that we do. So thank you for all of your work. And Sarah, thank you for keeping us, keeping us going. And Brian, a lot of that is a testament to your leadership. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes. Thank, you. Oh, thank you. Um, Financial overview, uh, Sarah sent out a, yet another. Uh, <laughs> only one. Only, only one today. I had supposed to quite a few last time. So uh, hopefully you have in front or perhaps had a look at yeah. both the uh, projected budget as well as our round one projects. Um, so the state has come in. Uh, maybe I can just reflect a little bit on this, Sarah, and then turn it over to sure. you if you have questions. So the state has come in with this estimated match of 217,000. You may recall two weeks ago, Sarah had it sort of lowballed it at 150,000. It's gone up to 217 now. There will be additional stuff once the state surplus uh, is that the portion that goes to uh, community preservation uh, projects. Uh, so there will be a little bit more, but Sarah has no idea what that little bit more is. Um, so when we look at uh, what is available to us, it's a little over a million and a half dollars. Now remember, 547,000 of that 
goes to Bean Farm, to Florence Fields, to Pulaski One, Pulaski Two. So we're in, as Sarah mentioned, a really a heavily bonded year. Next year, she estimates, I think you said 530,000 will be bonding for fiscal year 21, and then it radically drops off. Sarah said somewhere around 250,000. So we're in the lean times right now, and we're going to, uh, uh, um, to really see that increase, uh, whatever that is, two years from now, uh, once we get through this heavy quality. So again, when, we're, when we are acting as ambassadors for community preservation and telling people what is that we're doing, don't forget that what we're doing is also class one, class two, Bean Allard, and, uh, and Florence Fields. As well. uh, so we have available to us $966,750. Uh, of that, remember the 172 is in the two designated funds, housing and open space, and 203,000 is in the historic reserve. So we're committed to to, uh, to recognizing, recognizing that. Um, if we only have one historic preservation project in front of us, and this is the newly revised historic Northampton coming in 198,000. So if we were to fully fund them, we would still have to be leaving whatever that is. Uh, thank you, yeah, or maybe a little bit less than that uh, in the historic um, reserve. If we didn't fund anything in with historic Northampton, we still we'd be leaving two hundred three thousand. So we can't rob Peter to pay Paul here. Uh, that's 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 in there. Um, so remember, historic Northampton. I think the keen eyes of Linda caught that. What was it? Seven thousand uh, dollar addition. So their proposal is now up to one hundred ninety eight thousand. Everybody else remains remains the same also one uh, so if we were to um, uh, fully fund everybody we would be one hundred and forty two thousand and eighty four dollars over budget so keep in mind that that's when we take that one million hundred and eight thousand eight hundred thirty four projects subtract out our total that we have ninety sixty six thousand I'm getting hundred forty two thousand dollars a little bit more than that over so we're gonna to have to make some difficult decisions uh, tonight remember our nine hundred sixty six thousand is for uh, both this round in the fall and our second round in the winter spring so if we were again to fully fund or do our best to fully fund everyone and spend all our money that would leave us with at this point next to nothing uh, we may get a little more with that state surplus stuff, but we don't know. We don't know how much more that would, that would be. Uh, what other questions do folks have for Sarah on the budget or the projects? Sarah, anything you want to add no. to that? No, that was a good summary of what we have. Um, the Department of Revenue is the latest they've ever been with releasing the matching funds. So unfortunately, we're just not able to know what that additional allocation will be this year. No further questions for Sarah? All right, now comes the tough part, which is our funding recommendations. So in the past, remember what we've done is the shopping cart thing, where we go and we make motions to put things into the shopping cart. Um, once everything's in the shopping cart, then we start, start to revise that a little bit. And then at some point, we vote on individual items in the shopping cart. Rather, the, sh the, the cart as a whole will tease out each item and do a separate vote on that. Theoretically, we could get through this tonight. We don't have to. We have a meeting the first Wednesday in December, so we could put that off. I think. At least the feeling that I've gotten from folks is that it's certainly easy to power through and try to do that all in one sitting, because I think it's hard to come back in two weeks and remember quite where we are. So we'll, we'll, we'll see whether we can accomplish that. Uh, 
Sarah and I were talking today about how best to do this, and I thought it might make sense to sort of go by, um, by the reserve accounts and sort of begin with historic preservation. We have one project in that, and we have, uh, again, $203,000 available in that with a single project or multiple projects within one agency coming in at 198,000. Remember that the Forbes Library uh, grounds master plan listed historic preservation as one of their things that they fell in, but Sarah felt really uncomfortable with that and wants to move that out and put it into uh, sort of an undesignated fund. Okay, yeah. In the, in the interest of moving it along, I, I wonder if there are any of these that people would feel to, to sort of reverse it and ask are there any of these that people don't want to consider rather than going one by one by one, if there actually are any that anybody thinks should not be in the shopping cart. Do you have any that you don't think should be in the shopping cart? No. <laughs> the amounts obviously are are an issue. But okay, so Linda's know. suggestion is anyone feel strongly that some of the, that the seven projects before us, there should be some not in the shopping cart. <coughs> Does that answer your question? The silence. <laughs> 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 well, you have to end, ask, answer the question of whether you want to proceed that way and then just start, as you're suggesting, talk about the historic reserve and assume that they're all in the cart. Okay. Julie, would you say something? No. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll put one in uh, the non cart. I think the most the invasive go project, $10,000. Small, but just so that you have. Some. Anybody else in a in a not wanting to put it in the shopping cart? All right, so it sounds like we're we're uh, considering at least all of these projects with George the goatist, <laughs> anti goat, anti goat. <laughs> uh, so I think we'll just move forward if that's all right, Linda, with yeah. with this. Okay, so is there a motion well, we for? Have, uh, we got Mark Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just want to uh, remind. I am recusing myself in my discussion about the Forbes Library. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, appreciate that. And uh, Jeff, do you want to speak to your issue as well? I'm recusing myself from the um, Housing Authority uh, playground project. Okay. So uh, is there a motion to, with money attached, um, to put the uh, historic Northampton preservation assessment project into the shopping cart? Uh, so moved. Okay. At a full funding, 190,000, is that what your motion was, Mark? Yes. Okay. And everyone remembers we're, so you know, George and, uh, and uh, David who just came in we are uh, looking at the revised historic yeah. budget of 198. And I'm sorry that I was late. Before I came in, did you have any discussion about reserving any amount of money for the spring round? Uh, we have not had that, but okay. we are uh, all well aware that what we decide tonight, what major ramifications for the spring round. Has the committee in the past ever spent out all the money in the fall round and just said there would be no spring round and just I don't think we've ever had no spring round I think we spent out to to very, very minimal amount like under 100,000 for a spring round is that correct yes so okay. I know we discussed it yeah, yeah. Never then we got a wind fall right. somewhere right, right. Well, we'll get some money get some return money and some state money so yeah. that right. not bad <coughs> Um, Sarah can advise us, but for the past couple of cycles, the year has been sort of front loaded on requests. People have people have been aware of the problems <coughs> that have come come early rather than often. Um, and uh, so I, I don't know if Sarah has any 
thoughts on what we may see in the second round. But is there going to show? Yeah, share I, with me? I, I think that most applicants generally were aware of funding constraints and, and did want to get the applications in, or the timing just worked out for them. I'm not aware at this point of anything definitely coming in. I think you did share the possibility of the Ms. Flo's neon sign coming in. Possibly. That's a historic preservation thing. Uh, but they've been looking at that for quite a while, right? Uh, so. Is that, is that an order of magnitude or a small grant? I mean, I don't know how much signage they're talking about. I, I don't know yeah. at this point. I can't imagine it's too much, but you never know. Okay, back to historic preservation. The motion on the floor is to be looking at 198,834 for historic uh, Northampton. Discussion? Um, could, could you just review how we're going to do this again? Or we're going to come back again? Yes. Or, okay. Yes. We all, so, what we're voting right now is to go into the shopping cart. Uh, if, if, once everything is in the shopping cart, then we can. Uh, that would put everything in the shopping cart. And the question was how much. <clears throat> I don't think we put everything in the shopping cart yet. I think we're putting them in now. We could put it in with less than full funding. Yeah. If we come to that. Yeah. Yes. Um, so on this one, because of the two hundred three thousand we have allocated for historic and community on historic project they're sort of really well positioned in my mind uh, this year to get to get funded um, and it seems to me that the only reason we would not fully fund them given the fact that we can't move that money elsewhere is one if we feel that in some way shape or form the proposal isn't meritorious or that the, the, that something internal in the proposal doesn't add up or if we want to put something aside against the possibility that there's going to be specifically a historic in the second round. Um, so that's the way I'm sort of approaching this. Other comments about this project? I, I basically agree with Chris and I think there is a lot of momentum and um, I think we ought to just help them get this done. Folks listening in an audience, just a quick aside, just please know if there's not a whole lot of discussion, it's because we have been discussing this for quite a few meetings. So if you think, oh my God, they're gonna vote for 190,000, just like that. <laughs> um, we've heard from the applicants, we've read their applications, we've heard from some of you in speaking uh, your minds about the project. So I just want you to be aware I'll make one comment, which is, I don't know what it was, eight or nine years ago when Historic Northampton was coming to us for money. I was thinking to myself, oh my goodness, you know, are we going to give them money? Or are they just going to go belly up? And then I'm going to think, oh, why did we do that? And it's really been a spectacular run in the last three or four years. I mean, it's been unbelievable. You look at the number of, of programs that they're doing, and it seems like, you know, one a day. It's really, really interesting stuff. I'm trying to be as inclusive as possible and recognize that there are lots of different voices in Northampton's history that have not been heard. Uh, a lot of people have not been served by, by the organization. I think it's really amazing. I think a real tribute to the two co-directors co in, in there. <coughs> yes, what? Uh, so again, the Historical Commission obviously supports this application very strongly. Um, and I agree, and also um, with everything that you said, Brian. Um, I did do a little bit of uh, dissecting of the budget uh, based on the priorities that they had laid out for us if we could not fully fund them. And what I came down to is that um, the fourth priority is such a small request, $3,000. The third priority is a very large request. Um, so it would seem to be um, kind of, in a way, uh, not much of a, we wouldn't be making much of an imprint or savings if we did it on the whole thing. So I think it's worth it. And that is the store, the artwork storage system? Yeah. That's coming in, what, what is it? 3250. Um, other comments? 
Yeah, George. So, Chris, you mentioned about the two hundred three thousand dollars in the historic set aside. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and did you say there were no other applicants for that in this round? Yeah. Isn't the Forbes Library uh, historic? No, so, something we it's talked about. Zero one. Yeah, so, so it it does serve historic purposes, but it doesn't really meet the strict definition of what a historic project is uh, pursuant to the CPA legislation. Okay. So, George, Sarah's much more comfortable pulling that out and putting it into the undesignated. I see. So the one comment I have is that the, uh, the just as you said, it's, it's just a wonderful situation going on in historic Northampton. The co-directors are great. And I think they, like Wayne Fiden, have figured out the CPA process. And I think they will continue and continue to come towards us because I don't think the grounds and the buildings and their vision will be resolved or finalized for quite a while. Um, <clears throat> so, so I, I just that I don't think this is the end of it. So, and, and I don't quite understand the reason for fully funding um, all of it at this point in time. If in effect there, if in uh, in effect, there may be another round in the summer with a different historical entity that comes toward the board of us. I don't have the same history here of all the applications. I know last round there was a historical one from <clears throat> the Ruggles Center around the district. <clears throat> I don't know who else recently has applied for historical money. Maybe the windows at Forbes Library? The Academy. The Academy. The Academy. Yeah. The Academy's come a lot. I'm sure we'll see them again. And yeah. uh, St. John's. Yeah. Which we will not see again. So, so in terms of the, the as you mentioned, the porch and the art, um, the new uh, revised art storage system. I think it's about twenty five thousand dollars. The two of those combined, they kind of lumped them together, right? Um, yes, they did. That's yeah. correct. So I, I would suggest perhaps <clears throat> not funding them for that portion. I think the barn. And the other work is critical. But so. Although the porch is the entrance to that building, and right now they're having to go through the kitchen to get in there. Uh, it's the main entrance. Well, the they they haven't taped off the porch though. It's not a dangerous situation. I can't answer that. Yeah, I mean it's not. It needs rehab for sure. So, and they do rent that building out to uh, another entity, right? And they get rentals from that operation um, so so just my perspective okay. other discussion I think on the barn they've done a fantastic job leveraging you know it's a, it's a significant ask but they're doing I think more work than you could get on the open market say for the total cost of the project and has a very clear public benefit once it's done. Uh, if they go ahead with all the programming that they're talking about, which seems like they would. Um, you know, I think of another project, like in terms of other projects that we might fund in, in theory in the future, I think a project like uh, Sergeant House, um, where there's an overlay between historic preservation and maybe affordable housing, or getting some of that historic money out to outside of the big players in the, in the city, I think would be a great thing, but we haven't had those applications too often. So we do. And to me, it doesn't make sense to not give money to a certain project because of some theoretical category of projects that could some, come someday. Um, I say I'm, I have to say I'm less excited about, say, Parsons House or the porch. To me, I think 99% of the people in the city, it's still, they're still gonna look like old buildings. They just look like old buildings, like 99% of the buildings in New England, you know? So, and that's not as exciting to me, um, but the barn is, you know, and, and, but if they were asking for more money, I, I would, for those projects, I would say it's more of a discussion point. They're not asking for that much. So it's not really, there's no benefit particularly in my eyes to not getting any money. So I would say for the barn. I'm seeing it as being a $9,500 ask, George, on those two items, maybe I'm looking at something else for the side porch yeah. repair and the artwork storage system. Mm -hmm. 95, what did I call 25,000? Yeah. Yeah, my max. Yeah. 
The amount of effort it takes to submit one of these applications, and it's not that much money, I kind of hate to make them go through the whole process again for relatively small dollars. As soon as we have that reserve and nobody else, nobody else is knocking on the door for it. Other discussion? Anybody else want to weigh in? I'd like I'd like to put it in the shopping cart at least at the, as the full amount. And if we go through the list and come out short of money, go back and see where we can skim off some. So it, it's just put it in the shopping cart at, as the full amount would be my suggestion. Uh, Julia, anything? Yeah, I support. I support in the cart at the full amount. I don't think we're going to skim off it because it's coming out of historic, and um, it's as you said, it's been great to see historic Northampton grow and thrive. So let's let them continue to thrive, and maybe in a year we'll see something else come forward. But we can't. It's hard to fund in anticipation. We have a project in hand. It's a really solid project, and it's got a big scope. I, I support the whole thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I support the whole thing. Um, we have uh, 419,000 in undesignated. Um, that if, if any of that was left over, it could be used for historic if something showed up in the second round. I was very impressed with the tour. I think they got a great thing going. Um, I haven't been on this committee for that long. Um, it was interesting to read it uh, through the years when this stuff was being done. And I think it's great to be able to play a part now and support it. So I'm, I'm all in. I just want to make one other comment. Um, so no, they are really the, his, the stewards of the historical collections of the city that the Forbes Library in Hampshire. And, we have such a long history in the city, and it's, I think it's really um, critical that this institution be, um, we continue, all people continue to support it, because there really is no other place, and we don't want to lose that. Um, it's a very important piece of our community. Anybody else? Okay, so this vote is the preliminary putting into the shopping cart. Martha, you're recusing, recusing yourself? No, not for this one. Oh, not for this one. Which one? Which one? The fourth slide. Well, I'm sorry. Fourth slide. Okay, so the motion on the floor is in the shopping cart, 198034 for the preservation assessment for historic Northampton. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? So that is a 8 to 1. Is there you got that? All right, into the shopping cart. Uh, so next, I thought it might make sense to go into affordable housing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 172,000 allocated, or uh, uh, has to go into that. And we have two projects, North Commons with community builders coming in at 250,000, and the Glendale Road small home coming in at uh, 30,000. So 280,000 of which 172 is designated for that. Uh, any preference for which of those to begin with? We care? Glendale. Glendale first, small? Okay. So is there a motion for the Glendale Road Small Home Habitat for Humanity Project? Move mm -hmm. forward, fine. Yeah. Okay, a second? Yeah. Okay, discussion? Um, Sarah, can you refresh our memory? I'm sorry, I meant to ask you this this afternoon. How much have we put into the Glendale Road stuff, uh, projects already? And is this it for Glendale Road? Yes, so this is the, unless they come back for with another request for the same house, this would this represents the last unit there. Okay, and how many units have we done? Uh, three Glendale Road so far. And all of them? We're coming in at about this amount. Is that correct? We'll remember that. Was we did, we did, we did like sixty in twenty eighteen. I'm seeing. Sixty. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, sixty thousand. That was for two units. Yeah, for three. For that, three. Right. And that was for three. Yeah. The total project. Cost yeah, it was three units. Three. You're right. 
So three at sixty, and now it's it's one at, one at 30. thirty. Yeah, it's twenty percent of the of their budget. Yeah, they were asking for for this project. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, discussion on this. I mean, this is a great project where it's I'm not paying the whole thing, but we're paying for a significant piece without which it's hard to see how we move forward. So it seems like a good use of the fund. And they have a track record of clearly being able to build it. A similar project, you know, I know there's some changes, but without coming back to CPA for just you can see for more cash to finish the project. So that's great. That and it supports the, the city's approach of trying to save some save conservation land and carve out appropriate mm -hmm. um, land for affordable housing. So I think we need to be on board with that. Other comments? And echo what Linda just said. Yeah, the, with the combination. <clears throat> yeah. It's a good project. How much land did we set aside there, Sarah? Do you have? That was about 58. Yes, lunch. Oh, that's kind of good. Great. Are we ready to vote on this? Okay, so the motion on the floor is to is to um, for thirty thousand dollars for the Glendale Road small home habitat for humanity affordable housing project. All at thirty thousand. All in favor. All opposed. So that is unanimous. Moving on to our second and last affordable housing project, which is the 250,000 for North Commons, the community builders, sort of the last big leg of the Village Hill affordable housing work that we've been very active in. Uh, is there a motion on the floor? Move to fully fund. A second? Second. Discussion? Turning to our housing people, Linda. Um, I think that the, the, the budget is uh, so much better from the, than it was before. I think the amount is in keeping with what we've given to other projects. It's a completion of uh, the whole Village Hill area. I'm not aware of a lot of other affordable housing projects in the pipeline. I would just not be informed about that, but um, I have the feeling that this may be the last shot for a while. And even though this means we're going to have to take some money out of something else that we really don't want to take it out of, I would I would put it into into this project. Uh, Linda, the only thing I would add to that is that uh, if people are following the. Uh, Dial Self Northampton Youth Housing Project there on uh, on Route Nine, which is pretty much up, <coughs> and I think they're taking applications and looking at residency beginning the end of January. Nonetheless, there are 150,000 in the hole on that, where they've taken out a bridge loan so they can begin the process of getting kids in in, in housing. Uh, but that that could be one. Remember, we've gone going to that twice on that project uh, that they could come back uh, uh, with that one. So that'd be one. Like, Sarah, do you know any other affordable housing things that are? I, I'm not aware of any. I, but there may be some things out there. Yeah, I think on Birds Pit Road up by the intersection of 66, the, the city has done a similar thing in that Birch Bog Conservation Area. They carved off a bunch of lots, and I think about eight lots. And two to three of them will be affordable housing by habitat. I mean, I'm not sure exactly when they're expected to break ground. It's still in, I think it went through the planning board, but some of those are market rate lots and some are affordable <coughs> housing. So, habitat, I assume, yeah. would then come back. That's not going to be, that's not going to be a huge ask. Yeah. Maybe similar to this, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, as our housing um, authority person, um, I I support the project. Um, 
I have to say, looking at the overall budget, they're only asking for 1.2 percent for. Uh, would seem to suggest that um, one way or another, this this project's going to get done. I don't know that. Hold on, Jeff. We're still on uh, habitat. I'm sorry. No, no we're, we're on. on, 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 on Oh, that's right. You're on Brian. You're on I'm still on Abitur. <laughs> <We're on Abitur. laughs> my, my apologies. Sorry. Right. Um, so I think in the past, um, with Village Hill, we have partially funded these. Am I am I right about that? And then they came back um, to finish it off. And I don't. I'm just throwing it out there that that's a, that's a possible option when we. The way all of these projects together, we obviously don't have the funds to fully fund everything. Um, so that that's that's my my main take right now is is uh, it's only 1.2 percent of the of the total budget. It's a quarter of a million dollars, which is a lot for what we have to dispense. But it is a good project. <laughs> You're right, we have done it in sort of stutter steps before, and given given what we had when we had constrained budgets, um, this close to what I presume they hope will be a, a funded project and a closing, it gets harder to be switching the budget around, trying to fill the gap and change it, and it, it just gets harder to, to do that as you get closer to casting. I was impressed with the testimony of the people who live up there in the, the village community that they're building there. I wasn't aware of that, but I was pretty impressed with the people that came to speak about it. One thing I was impressed with is the uh, mixed housing, going from market rate houses, uh, and then being really inclusive in terms of meeting the needs of other folks. And that's really quite, and, and I think it's really impressive. The vision of, uh, of something for everyone is and being as inclusive as possible is pretty awesome. Um, just echoing what, what Jack said, there's often so much community opposition um, that it is really refreshing to have the community come in support of a project and say, please fund it, we welcome this, we, we want to be inclusive. It's like yeah. you never, never hear that. <clears throat> so they've obviously been doing something. It's a tribute to the people who were there, but it's also a tribute to, to the way the process has been handled. Other discussion? I mean, this is, a, I mean, clearly a work, to me it's a worthy project. Uh, although I have to say, I can't imagine that this is partially funded they're going to throw bricks on a million dollar project because of a couple five digit numbers on our six digit numbers. Okay. Um, so to me, the question is really the opportunity cost of what doesn't get funded. And, um, and there's clearly projects that won't happen at all if you don't fund them. So that, I think that's really the question to me. So I don't know that I could say in fact even what I think the I mean, level should this, this should be until we get to the end of this process. I mean, I would, I would be totally comfortable with maxing out the affordable housing <coughs> and then seeing from there. So in that window, you know, between that and what they're asking is probably where I am. Chris? Uh, no, I, I think a lot of good comments have been made. I, I think I'm sure where Jeff, Chris, Jeff, David, and Linda are, if you can put all those together. Um, I, I've just sort of come to adopt for myself the position that um, on a lot of projects, we we are or, or we're not the tipping point funders. Um, and where we are, I, I think our money is in, in some ways a better investment, um, which doesn't speak necessarily to the merits of the other, you know, the other programs. But I think it's a great program, and I think TCP has shown us that they can do really good work. Um, 
and uh, you know I want to continue to support them, but uh, I can't. I, like as David said, I can't. I can't. I can't put the dollar figure in and the back and uh, let's see where we go. So can I interrupt the question? Is there any reason we couldn't put the Hampshire Heights project in the affordable housing category and maintain an affordable housing project? It's the playground. It, it's not um, forwarding the, the function of the community adding itself. Units um, yeah. Units. It, so if it, we're doing work to the housing, then potentially it could be, okay. it could be eligible, but not for the project. So we're keeping that in. Uh, Thanks. Uh, Julie, are you going to say something? Yeah, I mean, I did some quick math. Uh, so after, if we fully fund, and I hope we fully fund Habitat, it leaves us with 142 in affordable housing. So we would, I agree with everything everybody said, this is an absolutely worthy project, but just realizing that it takes a quarter of our undesignated into this project because it would be, we would pull the 142 out yeah. of housing. That's yeah. another 108 that has to come from somewhere, and where it comes from is undesignated, and that's a quarter. I also, though, want us to think about the messages we got over the last year about um, the amount of money that we're funding on affordable housing over time as a committee, and and about putting a little more into that area. So. So all of those things. Yes, it would be a quarter. Yes, I think it's an important quarter. But it does take away from something else. Anybody else on this one? I really need to add, I think everything was very well stated and I agree. Are we good to move this forward? Okay, so the motion on the floor is to Fully fund at 250,000 North Commons community builders, at least initially, into our shopping cart at 250,000. All those in favor? <coughs> All those opposed? I'm not sure what I'm putting in. Abstain, so that's uh, 8 to 0 to 1. Is that we listed? So you got that? Yep. All right, so we are done with affordable housing. And moving on now to uh, the rest of the of the projects. So uh, Sarah and I were talking about perhaps um, National Honor Brook restoration leading towards <coughs> leading to the end. Uh, and there are two reasons for that. One is it perhaps has a, the most of any project in terms of some flexibility there in terms of what we can or cannot do. Keep in mind that with that project. The $400,000 land grant that um, Wayne and the city and Sarah were able to get uh, requires the $250,000 match. Oh, just to get Yeah. Okay. So of that $400,000, if we were to not fund at least the $250,000, we'd lose $400,000. Is that correct, Sarah? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, but the $150,000, remember, was going for management, um, and uh, but that is something that one could argue that we could that we could play with. So let's move to these others, if that's okay. And then the, these other four projects will leave that one uh, that one to the to the end. So we have uh, four. We've got the Hampshire's playground. We have the goats invasive species. We have the uh, trust the Forbes Library grounds, and then the uh, uh, National Honor Brook. Uh, any particular order we want to go in on that? Mm -hmm. Preference. Okay, let's go big and start with the uh, Hampshire Heights uh, playground coming in at two hundred thousand dollars. Move we fund to two hundred. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion. Um, I was originally thinking that you well, know, because they really haven't looked at the equipment really hard and they. Um, hard decisions that there was going to be some ability there as well to tear down. Um, but then I have some of the comments from the public session going through my head and talking about the lack of investment, the lack of quality, 
and I started to think, well, maybe we really don't want to do this. We're going to do it. Let's not make them do it on the cheap. Let's let them put in a good playground. So I think at this point, I would support fully funding it. Um, I think their budget is more pliable, perhaps, but I think we Something, something would be lost for sure if we could be The comments? Uh, I, I agree with Linda. Um, I, I was very, very moved by the presentation of the uh, community that uh, came, community members that came. Um, I, just one, uh, I guess, question I had is I noticed the um, construction budget for this compared to the uh, construction budget that is anticipated for the North Commons is a lot higher. They're about the same size. If the North Commons was um, budgeted at 97000 that's what we were told. Yeah. And this is over 300000 um, So I wasn't quite sure. And that may be the equipment choices, like you're saying, Linda. Um, and those aren't really spelled out. So uh, also buying a lot more site work on the Commons projects. I mean, it's, they're buying a much bigger project. So. Correct. Less yes, so presumably some of the site work is being done as part of the construction of the, the building. Mm -hmm. um, although the site work uh, portion of this playground is small compared to the uh, cost of the equipment. So that was just a, a question that I had, um, but I don't think that it's going to sway my opinion because I think it's really important to people active, kids especially. Julia, one thing you missed uh, two weeks ago in the public hearing was uh, some passionate uh, people and children. I watched the video. Oh, you did watch the video? Oh, okay. <laughs> so you got that, Those two yeah. views on, on YouTube? They're both me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're so But I logged on 47 times. I actually do have a comment about viewing our stuff on, on YouTube. This is the camera that always gets turned on, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the camera that I was always wishing was turned on. That, so that, that would, yeah, that, that one requires um, someone in the in the booth from. That's so Northern frustrating because you know I've missed two meetings, so I watched the presentations the same way, which meant that I saw the back of people's heads, and then I watched the public comment, which meant I saw the back of people's heads. But I heard what they said. We Other are. comments. I may be not biased because I have eight year olds, but uh, this seems like a huge benefit for the community. Um, especially when you look at the statistics, what over fifty three percent of the residents are between the ages of six and twelve is pretty staggering for a somewhat graying city, generally speaking. Um, in terms of the budget, I mean, I don't know. The North Commons came to us last year, the budget was a million dollars less than it was when I came this time, so I don't know. I, I so, sorry. I, um, is there there may be a way that when we um, if we fully if we if we fund this, there may be a way that when we do the conditional portion of it, we can do some language about budget review. I'm not I'm not thinking smartly about it now, but I suspect we could you know put something in there about I I don't, I'm not even going to speculate, but. I, we do have an opportunity to express to them our, you know, our views on, on being smart about how they get the equipment and that kind of thing. So I don't know if it's useful, useful or not, but we do have an opportunity. Julie? Um, so we did talk about this project at Parks and Rec, and uh, Parks and Rec thinks it's a great project. Um, Anne Marie Majo, who's the director of Parks and Rec, had actually offered to talk to them about equipment and consult with them on the types of equipment that we purchase when we do playground areas as well. And acknowledged that equipment's just plain expensive mm -hmm. in the area of playgrounds. You know, we we don't we don't build many new playgrounds in the city actually. We mostly let playgrounds and go for many, many years, and then we try to rehabilitate them, and it's always a really expensive price. And when we say we'll talk to them about the budget or the uh, Emory, we'll talk to them. Them is the housing authority staff, right? 
it's that yes, the right, community, that's right. it's the housing yep. authorities that who yep. probably in themselves don't do a lot of playground work, so I could probably yeah. use the assistance. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm fully in favor of doing this. It's great that we're able to start some new housing, affordable housing projects around the city, because this is one of the really standard bears for quite a while. Mm -hmm. This in Florence Heights, I think mm -hmm. it's really important that we kind of spread that around a little bit and support this this community there. Other discussion. This was one of the projects where I was very moved as, uh, to reiterate what someone said with the public comments. It was, it was very moving to me. Um, and I do think this, it may be appropriate for us to at least uh, um, mention some of the things. In, in looking at the budget, I see installation of equipment by the general contractor coming at $91,000. Um, and again, I'm not gonna, don't wanna micromanage. I think it's a great project, but I would certainly encourage I know when my kids are going to Jackson Street, for what it's worth, we helped build the playground there. Yeah. And, um, and it lasted for, I don't know, 25 years or something. So I just wonder if there's a way to encourage volunteer <coughs> labor. It just seems $91,000 is, is, you know, to build the playground. The other thing I would uh, encourage them to look at, and we can, we can offer this, is a designer fee of 38000 mm -hmm. Which also seems to me, and I'm not minimizing how important it is to design a smart and, and creative and fun and safe playground. But again, thirty-eight thousand uh, seems high. And you add thirty-eight thousand of that into the uh, installation of equipment by the, G the general contractor at ninety-one. That's coming in a hundred and what is that twenty thousand dollars of stuff that that seems to me perhaps we could encourage. Uh, uh, them to look at uh, and perhaps reduce reduce the cost and perhaps even bring money back to us if in fact we fully fund this. But again, I, I, I don't feel that it's my job, nor frankly do I feel it's this committee's job to micromanage the budget when the folks coming in know so much more than we do. Yeah, just a brand to add to that, I know landscape um, structures also does design work so presume that landscape structures is the company that makes the equipment and I, I wasn't sure whether the designer fee included um, landscape structures I, I wasn't sure about that so there may be a savings there too if the company provides the design so it's yeah I mean I would agree with what Chris says if we had an ability to um, follow up or get follow up on the budget and see that they can value engineer it or um, there may be some savings once they define the equipment. That would be great. Yeah. Sure. But yet, with the uh, North Commons, um, when we break out the math of each unit, there is what we say four hundred forty thousand dollars. And I know there's a lot of other regulations that go into the affordable housing when you're building it new. And but we're not holding them to the same standards of looking at their budgets. I mean, if they went from fifty-three units to 50 units, it would be a lot less, not our CPA take, but, um, so sometimes it's a little bit like apples and oranges. When smaller projects come in, we think we can tinker with them and they probably deserve more kind of, of a largesse from us than, than the larger big affordable housing that's already happened quite a bit up on Village Hill. Yeah, I, I agree. I think we already have a process in place in terms of how Sarah how, how the money actually leaves our accounts. It doesn't just go, we don't just write a check, right? It goes, it gets receipts, right? And invoices that are spent on things that fulfill, that are described by the contract. So I feel like it's a little bit paternalistic to just start demanding a higher level on this one. Uh, we certainly went on the other way, if like some projects started going over a budget that we had to start getting them more and more money. Yeah, so I think we should decide this is the amount of money that we feel like is valuable to give to a project. And, what do we do with all products? Chris? No, I was just going to say, you know, don't get me wrong. When I, when I put that out there, I was just like, if there, if we have concerns about how they've come to their numbers, we can ask them to come back to us with information on that. Um, if I'm going to be accused of over budgeting for something, this is the kind of project for that. <laughs> this, is, this is the kind of project for which I want to go down. Um, so. And I do think Julie's point is well taken. I mean, 
if they can get some advice from people in a city who do do playgrounds and have seen that with a variety of things rather than just the housing authority who doesn't have a history of that, that would be a wonderful kind of resource. I think it's different. I mean, at Jackson Street, when they just built a new playground two years ago, it's really hard to understand what it costs because it was done with a huge amount of volunteer labor. I mean, the whole yeah. school community came out for weeks and built that thing. So the wood itself is not that expensive. You know, it's, it's all the labor. So. I don't see the 91,000 as that crazy. It's not expensive pieces of equipment. It's the manufacturer, it's the insurance and getting installed correctly. Other discussion? Okay, so the motion on the floor is uh, to allocate 200,000 in the shopping cart for the Hampshire House uh, playground. All in favor? All opposed? And we are good to go. One recused. One recused, so eight to, eight to zero. Um, into the shopping cart. Okay, uh, next let's deal with the uh, 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 master plan for uh, trustees of Forbes Library, $20,000. Uh, coming in to hire an architect, landscape architect. Is there a motion on the floor? Motion. <laughs> okay, thank you. Four coming in at twenty thousand. Yes. Okay. Second. Thank you. Okay. Discussion. Isn't it twenty-five thousand? That's a project. Oh, okay. So my understanding. So who is recusing? Martha is. Can we can we continue to ask you questions, Martha? Or are you just don't vote. Is that, is that how this works? I, I probably won't be able to answer them. I mean, I'll, I, <laughs> I can try, but I probably won't. So all of this is for a landscape architect, is that correct? I'm coming to do the master plan as well. And I guess my question to you, Martha, was it, it seems reasonable to 20000 to for a project like this? It depends on the scope of work, yeah. It depends on what they're expecting out of it. You know, so really you could do something like for this, this for that amount of money, but it's, it's going to have, you know, the scope will have to be uh, tailored to that. Uh, discussion? Uh, Jack? This, this is a proposal that I was hoping to save money on. Um, probably feeling that it's something that could go forward in the future on another round, perhaps, and the, the urgency isn't there. And I was hoping. It's not a great deal of money, but if we have to thin something out, this is on my list of, of maybe uh, bypassing for this round and encourage them to come back in the future. I made the same notation. Could wait is what I've got on my. Yeah, exactly. As did I. Other comments? Chris? Yeah, I, I did as well, but I, I also think that um, if that's the way we go, that we do want to encourage them to come back. Um, my, my, my feeling is, is that um, this is the kind of money that um, makes the money that comes after it smarter. Um, in the past, in other situations, you know, we have critiqued organizations that have come to us um, with proposals that didn't really seem to fit into a vision. Um, and I think that Forbes Library has put a lot of energy and, and money into what should be their number one priority, which is safeguarding, you know, the collection that's there. And we've been able to help do that. And I think that, um, you know, moving forward, then it becomes a question of how do you, how do you better utilize um, the resources that you've got. And I don't, I don't view the master plan based on conversations that I've had with them. I don't view the master plan as sort of a landscape design. I think it has to do with asset utilization. I think that there are a number of competing visions for how to use the space around the library um, for programming and that type of thing, and that they're looking for us to help them come up with uh, the resources to you know, define that space and, and, and make it work. Um, Probably, probably in a way that's not going to make everybody happy, but it's going to, but it's going to make the library, you know, 
the bigger library conception of a library more um, more effective in doing you know fulfilling the library's mission. So I think it's a I think it's a good plan. I just but I'm with some of my other other colleagues here. I'm not. I don't. I don't feel any immediacy, immediacy behind it. But I, I. I do think we ought. If we don't fund it this round, that we ought to encourage them to come back. Because I think it's good. I think it's a good investment. Other comment? I sort of wish this was coming in at two hundred thousand, and then I just say no. Uh, Twenty thousand is is a little harder. But I also agree that of all the projects, this has the least immediacy. Is that a word? Um, and it can certainly be something that, that they can come back to. Uh, it might be nice to tuck away for another uh, round. Any other comments? Yeah, George. Well, and, and I would think if this was funded and they went ahead with the master plan, part of that would be estimation of future work with dollar signs around it, right? And, to, and, and Forbes doesn't really have a lot of places to go other than other grants in the CPA. Um, so I know a lot of organizations do that, right? But then they would probably be coming to the CPC for monies to complete the master plan in many ways. Um, and I also think I, I really, uh, I, I love that they're trying to become a community center in many ways and go yeah, outside of their four walls. It's a great institution, but I know Pulaski Park, which isn't too far away, has a stage and grounds and things, amenities for the public. Um, Smith College does too. Um, so <clears throat> I, I know they want to enhance their mission, but I also wonder if they aren't duplicating some amenities that are already within walking distance of the library. So just to add on to that, George, remember we got that Forbes Grounds Master Plan Approximate Budget. Remember they sent that? Well, uh, Sarah said that was a few weeks ago. Yeah. It looks like somewhere around, so they, they priced out some of these potential, all potential and approximate, coming in, I'm estimating, was it 225000 or something? $230,000, uh, which would be certainly they, something I would imagine they would come back to us at some point. Uh, I was a little perplexed by this application because I don't question any of the like it's good what they're trying to do, but you know. But if, yeah, they have a long list of pretty specific things. They have some general idea of what they cost. You're not going to get that much closer in terms of cost in the master planning effort for this amount of money. And it seems like the real work that has to happen is sort of internally of prioritizing, which you could do with the landscape architect listening or not. I mean, it seems like there's a lot that can happen to move this ahead just with the staff that they have. And with regards to the duplication of public amenities, I think that's sort of some of the tension with Forbes having this sort of special place as not sort of city, not city, you know. And I think that makes it sort of hard to plan comprehensively in a way. But I think it's an easy one since we have other things to fund. So it's certainly not going to harm the building or anything not to do this. Yeah, so. I'm trying to remember what we budgeted for landscape architect for. Uh, Pulaski part. Uh, which That's a real design. It's yeah. a totally yeah. different level of effort. Yeah, I mean, completely different. Yeah. yeah. Are we ready to vote on this? Okay, we have one recusal. One uh, so the motion on the floor is uh, to allocate, to put in the shopping cart $20,000 for the grounds master plan for uh, Forbes Library. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, so it is unanimous in opposition. All right, moving on to uh, the GOAT project, uh, invasive control with GOATs, um, coming from planning. A motion on the floor. Second. Second. Uh, discussion. Clearly, not going to solve the issue of invasive in the city, and it's, it's you know, I don't see the particular value to it other than its um, undisputed cuteness. <laughs> <laughs> There's also an educational um, opportunity, right? 
I don't think I've ever heard you say adorable and cute. <laughs> It's because he's on his way out now. <laughs> yes. the, real, the real David is going to rear his head here. I, I think there is some value to it, given, for instance, the controversy that played out in front of us. Yes, the community but you're gardens, correct. And knowing whether there is a, a, another viable solution is something that's valuable. Does it have to be funded this round? No, but I would support at some point funding it. Chair, you want to speak to this? Uh, I just personally, uh, uh, I feel it can, it's on another one of my wait lists um, just because I think it can be done. It's not a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money in the future, too. So we can pick it up when we, we're feeling comfortable with it. I think eventually we're going to need to do some things because the uh, chemicals that are being used now are just being discovered to be untenable in a lot of situations. So some remedy will have to be found, but I, I think it's one uh, we can put off until another day, in my estimation. Julie? Uh, so I agree, it's cute, it's adorable, and, and I agree that we can put it off. And I'd also like to put it off in light of hearing what the final report is on the, the they call it the select committee or yeah, this we're going to have a pesticide plan for the city mm -hmm. it feels like this is all tied together it would be nice to have it all together plan for pesticide use in the city a pilot project to look at goats and whether that weighs up well with an entire plan to deal with pesticides and invasives and what's going on in the environment around us <clears throat> Tour. I wondered if this hopefully was to help inform any of that discussion or decision to have that two month study of uh, the goats. My recollection is that the committee that's been meeting, they have to have a final report on it, I think in December. Is that is that right? December 8th, I think, is the deadline. Yeah, I just got some kind of. Yeah. Um, so I don't think this would have time to inform that um, other than the pilot pilot project that they tried down at Vets Field. Yeah. Um, but I, haven't been able to, I, I tried to attend a couple of the hearings early on, but I haven't been able to attend the later ones, so I'm not sure where they're, where they're at. Uh, so I, um, my, my only question would be, I don't think there's anything in there about this, but is this the timing of using the goats, whether they need to come in in the early spring when the plants are emerging? Um, and that would, Obviously, if we said it, it when was we'll come back in the second round, by the time the funding was available, then mm -hmm. plants would go march, and maybe the project wouldn't work. Um, so that would be my only question. But I also think it could wait as well. And I, uh, I think that the other open space project is more of a priority. Yeah, I think. But last round, I think we uh, we provided some money to the Lathrop community to do some invasive removal and pretty much by human power. I forget the amount of money that was and that's had some, some really concrete results. Um, part of me wants to say we need to try so many different alternatives because invasives are such a problem. Um, but I can't see my way through uh, the amount of goats that are needed <laughs> to do this work when you have people power who need jobs and and there are a lot of companies out there who can do this work also hand stuff not not with poisons or anything so or herbicides so uh yeah I, I i just don't see it at this point as much as i admire wayne's vision here other folks I would certainly encourage us not to underestimate the insidious nature of invasives and going around town and looking at things like Japanese knotweed that really are taking over mm -hmm. and reading to the, the letters to the editor in the Gazette, if it's not about the senior center and <laughs> taking away rich players' rights to scream at each other um, and other things. Uh, it seems to be about glycophosphate, am I saying that right? Which is the active ingredient in Roundup. And some of the real concerns 
How, how do you say? Glyphosate. Glyphosate. Thank you. Um, and that uh, uh, this is really is, I think, an innovative uh, project. Um, I'm not sure it warrants ten thousand dollars, but I do think the more we, it, it's a it's a uh, a pilot project. The more information that we have to proceed, we're saying, well, let's wait for the pesticide people to weigh in. Well, the pesticide people really should be waiting for the goat people to weigh in. Uh, one could argue. Uh, however, it is something that can wait, but as we wait, invasives uh, creep in. Uh, I mean, I would like to see this funded at, at not that amount. Keep it as a pilot project and see if it could, could, could add to the information gathering about what to do about the horrible invasives. Sure. Yeah, so I just took a quick look back because as soon as you said that, I thought we have actually funded some invasive work. Yeah. Not always. Broadbrook. Right. Broadbrook. Not just Broadbrook, but um, we, we, so we funded Broadbrook twice, both to, times to the tune of 69 50. And then we funded Lathrop, as you pointed out, which I'd forgotten about. And, uh, and they came in at three. And if you add all that up, it covers a lot more area than this pilot would. For, for, you know, about the same amount of money. So, where I'm going, I would love to see this pilot happen, smaller scale, right? Just, just tone it down. Is there a way where we could fund a piece of it and get a pilot program to, to get the information so that we don't get, it, get yet another 69.50 to fund Fitzgerald Lake, 69.50 to fund Fitzgerald Lake invasives over and over and over again because twice we've done that at Fitzgerald Lake. Once we've done it at Lathrop, and we're going to keep getting those requests. And we'll have a report from the um, from the City Council Select Committee that will tell us not to fund that, and, and we will be left with the what do we do? Um, you know that. So we need the pilot. I don't know. If someone needs to fund it. We need the pilot. I think this conversation actually makes me think when, when, when the community gardens came to ask about uh, using Roundup, a lot of what we talked about was the scientific papers that came along with that. Mm -hmm. It's not particularly the role of this. Like if someone came, oh, we want to do a pilot program on pesticides, we want to see what works. Like you know, this is not the place to fund scientific research. And <laughs> there's not really anything other than, oh, it maybe go to work, you know, in this application. So, has someone, has no one out there done any research on whether goats are actually useful against invasive like this? And it's, it's like, I assume that's probably done somewhere. I don't know, I have not done any research on it. It just doesn't seem like a good use of community preservation funds to sort of say, oh, this might work, let's try it. And sort of, that's sort of like a research, sort of basic research kind of thing to be doing. Yeah. Um, so. No more idea in the future either. Let's find out where some research on and find out where has it worked, where has it not worked. I mean it's gotta be studied somewhere so in a more yes. comprehensive way. Yeah. Right. I, I, I can't I can't imagine that if I, I, if Broadbrook had come up with this proposal, it would be eighty pages long. <laughs> Wayne, for all his brilliance and great work, you know, gives us a four page proposal <laughs> with no mention of how big a space how or many where, hours? Where it's going to be? Where it's going to be? I mean, there, there's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty thin little thing here. There's actually more information in this packet about pesticides than about goats. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so we certainly have some, some unanswered uh, questions here. Other comment, Brian. Um, I think when Wayne presented this, I asked him at the end about, uh, or he's, he made reference to a private contractor, and it, it turned out to be the same one that I knew about that employed goats, um, and, it, and I think he said it wasn't. The, that price, um, those folks are out of business with their goat project. But he's, I think he referenced that it would have been twice the cost. Uh, to go with them, but I do think, I mean, my recollection was that it, it wasn't, it was an effective way to treat invasives. I don't know if it's, if it's cost effective for um, what he's looking to do, but I kind of echo where um, Julia was going. 
it's, and it's also just it's a very Northampton type thing to do <laughs> <laughs> and it and it does respond in part to what we had to deal with last year and I think we I think this is an opportunity and I, I kind of agree with you Brian about a um, not a total funding but um, I don't think five thousand six thousand that's not going to break our bank for what we have to decide here so I'm well I'm willing to support it but um, not at the asking price make it a half a bill <laughs> see how it works other questions comments ideas okay the motion on the floor is to put in at the cart at uh, ten thousand uh, dollars for the GOAT project. Are we ready to vote? Okay. Uh, Before we do, do we? Did you want to? Yeah, I was going to say, do, can, we, can we look at an amended sure. motion? Who, who made the motion? Do you remember, sir? Linda? Uh, uh, Linda? Yeah. You care to? I'd love to amend it. Would you like me to amend it too? <laughs> <laughs> Five thousand. Put it in a five. Five. Two five. Five. Uh, I want to uh, amend my previous motion from ten thousand to five thousand. And we need a second on that. Second. Okay. So the motion on the floor has been amended now. Five thousand dollars for the goats. Uh, any further discussion, George? So yeah, this is a procedural question. So it's going in the cart. And we're going to come back around and we're yeah. going to say, is this worth $5,000? So we're yeah. going to vote yes. on it again. Yeah. We're yeah. just voting to put in the cart, not to check it out. We get another bite at it. We get another <laughs> bite at it. Because <laughs> yeah. then we'll see what our, it what our total cart oh, is, right? Stop. Chew it it's over. Did you hear that? Oh, I need to go. Jokes we made. So the motion is at $5,000 for the GOAT project. Good to go, yes? Yeah. OK, all those in favor? All those, that's one, two, uh, hands up again. So we have one, two, three, I think we got another vote with three, six. All those opposed? Okay, six, two, three. Do we put it into the card? Okay, last but certainly not least is the National Monarch, am I saying that correctly, sir? Uh, yes, sir. National Monarch uh, Riparian Restoration. And just to reiterate, the proposal comes in at 400,000. 250,000 of that is the, is the match for the $400,000 part grant. Move we'll uh, we fund at 250. Second. Uh, so we got uh, a motion to partially fund at the cost of the land without the uh, any of the um, conservation work um, that goes with that. Uh, Sarah, can you can you just uh, uh, refresh my memory? The the, the, the three hundred thousand dollars that's coming in for trees. Did people remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the big solar project and their sort of carbon offset stuff. Is is the three hundred thousand for trees is specifically for this project? Is it, that correct? It is not. So that goes into the tree mitigation fund. Um, and then it that is available for tree planting. I don't and I don't know if that has been specifically set aside at this point for this project. Okay, but this project could use some of that. Is it that could. correct? What, okay. what Brian, what I recall his saying at the site visit that you were not at was that the first priority would be for this project and then and then the rest would be for planting trees elsewhere. And the dam Removal is also part of that um, first phase of ecological restoration. Is that correct, sir? Uh, the way that it's presented here. Okay. And is there? Do we know how much? How much it costs to remove that dam? And this was a a uh, educated guess based on the preliminary conversation as far as I know. Which was what? Uh, what because 150 is not just for dam removal. No, most of it is, though. I believe. Yeah, I, I don't know how that breaks down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, discussion? Other discussion? Yeah, correct. So, um, 
I suggest 250 because um, I don't want to leave 400,000 on the table. I think it's a worthwhile project. I think that once we have the land in hand, we then have the luxury of time to figure out how to fund the rest of the work, which will be ongoing for, I suspect, several years. Um, and uh, I want that $150,000 to fund some of the other things that we've discussed tonight, which I consider um, uh, more worthy. That's what I'm looking for, more worthy. How much, Sarah, do you think it would cost to electric fence in 105 acres so we just put the goats in there? <laughs> probably probably, probably <laughs> more than <laughs> <laughs> Other comments, George? So the application checks off two areas, recreation and open space. Where does this fall? It's all recreation. Uh, this could this could be either. So this will create new recreational opportunities where none exist none exist currently, or will different opportunities exist currently, and will also permanently protect. But we don't so have to designate. We, we, we don't have a set aside for recreation. Right. It's just open space has the has the designated. So, so to Chris's comment, though, it's the other recreate. There's no other open space application. So the other application where money could go to is the the Hampshire Heights one. Is that what you're alluding to? Well, yeah. But this is this is money that's coming out of uh, unobligated funds. Ah. Right. Okay. Undesignated. I'm sorry. Undesignated. There's 172,000 in the open space reserve. So to fund it at 250, the remainder would have to come from the undesignated fund. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, I, I, I find it interesting. It's uh, titled the application, you know, the Nashawanic Repair and Restoration, not open space purchase, which is really the predominant cost. But I guess. Um, Yeah, I just, I just find that interesting. And I agree. I think it's really important that we that we purchase this land um, at the very bottom line. And something tells me Wayne will be back for more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Martha? Uh, on that note, uh, I, I agree. I think that it's important for us to match the grant and get the land in hand. Um, when Wayne does return, which we will we will, um, I, I really would like to see a detailed um, breakdown on what won the dam removal, but also overall, you talk very vaguely about tree planting. There's There are a lot of trees on the property now. Uh, honestly, I didn't see a lot of invasive species when I was out there on that sidewalk. They were mostly natives from what I saw. Um, and I think it would be nice to have an overall, see what the overall long-term plan is um, for tree chanting for any kind of, you know, riparian habitat, restoration, whatever, um, before we start just, you know, uh, making contributions to it. I think part of what he was looking for money for was a match for a master plan that would cost, Sarah, you can help me here. It was like a $300,000 grant for a master plan that they were applying for, and some of this money would be a match for that? Uh, that came up after this application was submitted. So the city has been looking at a municipal vulnerability program grant to potentially fund some restoration, but I, I don't know a lot about the details of that. I thought he was looking for money for a master plan, and then there would be money, more money for the actual implementation of the master plan. I, I don't know. Chris? Well, no, Jack, Jack hasn't had a shot at this. Sorry, uh, I just wanted to uh, bring up before the committee, uh, uh, I think if, if we could add $5,000 to immediate needs for restoration, uh, I'd like to do that. The, the purchase is critical and that money if we could add 5,000 to it for any immediate emergency type restoration having to do with a pond or the drainage or whatever, I think that that would be really helpful and I'd like to see that happen. Um, I think we need Sarah to do some math for us because we're getting pretty close mm -hmm. and with the historic reserve, we might just be able to eat that out. I think we could. Not. 
We're, we have, if, if we fund everything right now that we've said we would we put into the shopping cart and fund this at 250, my math says we still have about $33,000. So there would be 28,750 remaining in the undesignated reserve. And that's leaving the exactly right because the 4,166. Yeah, 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 I forgot that. In I historic preservation, is that correct? Close though. Ah, uh, yes. So. And, and is that going yes, with Jack's yes. additional five thousand? No, that would that's that number. That's just we could do. So the twenty-eight would be in undesignated yeah. uh, right now funding at two fifty. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Chris, can, can I just Jack? Where, where does five thousand come from? Is that just a uh, in the in the proposal? Um, it was five thousand for immediate. That's that's in the category. Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't that in the category of if the land grant didn't come in? Yeah. Well, I think that's because they wanted 150 well, otherwise. But if the land grant didn't come in, they absolutely they need the five thousand for the most immediate. So yeah, scale scale down critical restoration. Is that maybe the hazardous the materials? There's right. a, there's some hazardous right. materials on the site. So I believe that that would be removal of some of the things that need to come up immediately related to the drainage and also making sure the area doesn't grow up into an invasive forest because it, um, the area that stops mowing that, that hasn't been mowed recently grows up really quickly. So the hard, the longer that sits, the harder that will be to address. So with that, it, it, I mean, it, you know, we have these two different versions of budget, one for success, one for not success. So if it's successful, does that get covered, Sarah? Uh, that was, I think Wayne had pared it down to the absolute most critical needs for the not uh, successful land grant application scenario. So the $5,000 OPS matches in both versions? Yes, so that, that would be staff time for, um, for oversight and Implementation. I guess the question is if we just give five thousand dollars, what does that actually do anything? Yeah, there's good question. Or do we need like a chunk of money? Let's see. Yeah. Would, would you need like ten thousand dollars to establish that? Yeah. 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 Sarah, you're, can, can you comment on David's? Right. Right. David's thing. What, to your knowledge, what would five thousand get us, and does it work? I think five thousand would be enough to hold the property over until the next phase of funding, wherever that may be coming from. Coming from. Jack, is that? Yeah, that, that was my understanding. So I thought it was necessary to attach a little more for those jobs. George, um, if I remember correctly, part of this purchase is that the uh, the landowner is going to keep some lots up on the hill, sell those off. And I think he's gonna keep the the maintenance shed where most of those hazardous materials are because Wayne didn't want to touch that. But the city was gonna also own, have the uh, opportunity to sell two or three lots on Wilson Road. And I wish I had asked Wayne, what happens to that money that they realized from selling those lots to a developer? I, those I believe are all being retained by the property currently. So the, this I, wouldn't be a <coughs> It wouldn't. No. So the property owner yeah. is holding on to those lots to sell. He's holding on to the ones on the hill and uh, yeah, a couple. And I Wilson thought Road. the the city was going to use some of that frontage on Wilson Road for some lots. No, I don't. Because no? okay. then I, I just wonder what you would do with that profit that could go into this. But if that's not the case, then there is no profit. There is. That does not seem to be the case. So Jack is making the plea to change the proposal from two hundred fifty to two hundred fifty-five thousand. Is that correct? That's right. I'd like to do that. Can Can I ask you though? So how critical is that? Let's say we didn't put the five in, leaving us with a little more for the next round. Would the timing be okay to come back in the next round and get that five? Um, As a, or whatever a small grant. Like how quickly is this? Like how how through? how fast is that five needed? <coughs> question. I don't know. How so when are they going to close on the land? Yeah, that's, right. That's the um, Most likely early January. Yeah, so couldn't we just get the land acquisition and then if there's a critical need, 
hear about that critical need and get an absolute budget on that critical need from Wayne as opposed to right now saying, hey, here's five. It's kind of in there <coughs> under the part of the budget that was for not this in a way. Come back and tell us what you really need. Mm -hmm. I, I suspect that Wayne would most likely come back with an expedited application yeah. that identified right. the absolute most critical need. Then, then I would be more so, instead of putting in five now, I'm more supportive of, of, of waiting to get an application that details exactly what's needed. Because maybe it's six three that's needed. I mean, we're. Jack? Uh, I'll withdraw my request in hopes of getting more information. So. But where are we, Sarah, in the conservation fund? Remember, Wayne Europe ah. here was coming to to pad that. Is there, is there anything available now? No, that that is all. Okay, of course. I'm surprised that Wayne hasn't come. I, I think he identified this as clearly the, the most pressing need of the fund, and didn't want to ask for you. You complained enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jack has withdrawn that request for additional 5,000. So the proposal on the floor is 250,000. Is there any further discussion on this? OK, all those in favor of allocating 250,000 for the National Monarch Recreation and Restoration? All those opposed? OK, we have a shopping cart full of six proposals. One we have. Uh, not put in the shopping cart, and that is the trustees of Forest Library. One that we have with uh, uh, some significant opposition, which is the goats. And then four with, uh, I think we're in consensus on those four. Um, so just to go through them again, National, uh, National Honor Broke Restoration coming in at 250000 The grounds master plan for Forbes, we're putting it at zero. Glendale Road in at thirty. North Commons at 250, Hampshire Heights at 200, Goats at 50, and five. Five. I'm sorry, at five. <laughs> yeah. <Large. laughs> this court, North I thought my idea of freaking putting the goats in in the in the golf course is a great one. No one else wants to fund an electric fence that goes off for five thousand. <laughs> uh, and the 198,834 for the historic Northampton. Sarah, can you do the math one more time with us and see what that leaves us in our, both our historic preservation, which would be 3,166, correct? 4,166. So, so with those amounts, there is 4,166 remaining in the historic reserve, um, none in the open space reserve, none in the affordable housing reserve, and 28,750 in the undesignated. Wow. Can you say it again? 20,750. 750 and 4,166 in historic. Okay. And keep in mind that uh, that can only go up as the uh, state surplus uh, final amount comes in sometime, hopefully, in the, in the near future. Okay, so the way we've done this in the past, we have a shopping cart with six items in it, uh, and we pull them out one by one and vote on them individually. Is that correct? Are we good with that process? Can we start with the goats? Uh, we could start wherever. We're... It's the one that was the that had the the, the most. Yes, I think we were in consensus about about everything else. Yeah. Okay. And uh, is that okay to begin with the goats? Okay, so we're taking our items out. We are at checkout now, and our votes we will. Uh, and and as as we're voting, and we may not get to this tonight. What is it? Eight thirty? Time is it? We're doing yeah. pretty good. Uh, remember to be thinking of conditions that we want to put on these projects as well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think that those conditions make sense to talk about while we have the projects fresh in our heads. So we may want to. Uh, take the items out, pay for them, but then before we leave the store to put conditions on them. Uh, rather than doing conditions now, before we check out, does that make sense? Check out first? Yes? Yes. Okay. So uh, Julie would like to do the, uh, to do the goats. The goats are out at $5,000. Uh, is there a motion to check out with, with the goats at 5000 
A second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion on this? So I'm back curious about timing on the goats. Could the goats wait to the spring? That's my question. The goats get older, they come in historically fun that 4166 were done. You know. <laughs> I mean, could the goats wait to spring to the next round? Uh, so it wouldn't be spring, which would be the only issue. So the, the funding for the spring round of projects will be available to applicants probably until July. July. So I don't know if there's particular plants that would benefit from an early spring versus some that are better to wait until the autumn. So George? My understanding about the minimal goat pilot project that happened down by Bench Park is that it was only for mature Japanese anatomy. They can't differentiate between <coughs> um, good plants and bad plants. <laughs> so um, that that project itself was done pretty late in the summer. Yeah. Um, you know, more like yeah, July or August. Were they flower? So, were they in flower? Uh, they might have even been past that. You know. Um, so and again, I think some of the other comments about is there other research around the the goat effectiveness, and um, perhaps that Wayne could find, and also a little bit more details about. Uh, where he was going to do this now, he was going to do that. Is it, uh, is it only for Japanese knotweed? And what's the, uh, the capacity for the goat? Uh, I think there's some more information we can get to really grapple with it. So I, I, I agree kind of with the same determination around the 5,000 for the repairing the project that we could wait on this until next spring and ask Wayne to come back. Um, the other, just to add to that too, uh, there was a pilot project done and um, have we seen any uh, post, post, is there been a post evaluation of that a year later um, to see whether the control has really worked? It was done this summer. Okay, so. So I don't, I'm not sure the first is it, out, is it? Yeah, so the, the goats ate all of the plants and then it, um, there was a freeze really not that long after that. Okay, so they're dormant now, they as are. far as we know. Yeah. Okay, and this is all knotweed? Yes. Okay. So um, in the spring, we could see some emergence, possibly. I imagine we will. I can't imagine that it would not happen. Definitely. Um, yeah. And okay. I, what I saw is that the woman who tends the goats, yeah. she came back herself after the goats had eaten like a month later and was trimming the emerging growth because they continued to blossom. So there is some handheld stuff that happens there. Oh. And my understanding is that even with the goats, you need to do this for two or three years Absolutely. in order to really get at those rhizomes and um, I mean, if, this is, Actually, if this is something we're gonna fund, which doesn't sound, I'm not sure where we are on that, but I would say a condition would be that the keeper should not be doing, if this is some kind of test, saying, oh, goats plus a little help from a keeper, like it's not, it doesn't make, you, you don't learn anything from this. If it's sort of like, we're helping the goats uh, it just doesn't make sense to me as a pilot project. That's not how you do a test. And what are you controlling it again? I don't know. There's just so so many. I agree. It like makes us feel better about not funding, you know, supplies of faith. But it just it doesn't seem like people who aren't sitting in this meeting about hearing about what the kind of projects we're funding <laughs> that we're cutting back on affordable housing or whatever else we're cutting back because of a goat. It just doesn't make sense. My father has goats and jellies, not beef, so. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you were going to say something? No, I'm <laughs> I think it's important to spend the maximum amount of time on the snow. Can we go another 20 or 30 minutes on this one? All right, then. I will. No. Um, <laughs> going back to when we had uh, a proposal at the community gardens. Uh, oh to do this, one of the things, and I'm just I'm pulling this out, but I, I remember it to be accurate, was that five years of treatment would yield 90% success. So you're not talking about eradication. I was actually surprised uh, two weeks ago not to uh, be listening to a lot of the community gardeners coming back in support of this project. I was re really surprised. I thought this would get people coming out mm -hmm. because here uh, people are so um, uh, profound in their opposition to Roundup. 
Yeah. And here was yeah. a pilot project. There was a solution that drew not one comment. Yeah. Uh, I think I would be um, encouraging us to think differently if 15 people had spoken, or 10 people, or 5 people, but no one spoke. That, that may be because we did not do outreach. That, they didn't know. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. They didn't know about it. Okay, are there further discussion on this? So, the, we're taking out of the shopping cart, checking it out. Uh, the proposal is $5,000 for the for the evasive uh, control with growth goods pilot project. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, we switched with that round of discussion. One in favor and eight opposed. That is not making it through checkout. Okay, moving along, and maybe we'll go in in the order that we went in before. Um, the preservation historic uh, preservation assessment for historic Northampton coming out of the shopping cart at one hundred ninety-eight thousand eight hundred and thirty-four. Is there a motion to accept that to check out with that? Mm -hmm. Julia, a second. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion. Once again, to reiterate, that will leave us with 4,166 as a carryover into uh, our round two of fiscal year 20 in the, uh, in the historic reserve. No discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, so that is a eight to one on that. All right, moving along to the Glendale Road small home. Habitat for Humanity, taking it out of the shopping cart at $30,000. Is there a motion to check out with that? Move fine. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? That is unanimous. Uh, the North Commons Community Builders coming in at 250000 for affordable housing. That will leave our affordable housing reserve at zero mm -hmm. if we do this. Uh, and some of this will come out of the undesignated. Mm -hmm. uh, motion to check out? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? George. So um, some of the money is going to come out of undesignated for this affordable housing project. If then, how much money do we have next round in undesignated? Uh, we said ten. Uh, it, it depends on what we what check we out check here. out here tonight, and then any of the uh, priority areas can attach themselves to the undesignated. Correct. It's a, now, correct me if I'm wrong. We had at the end of our filling our shopping cart twenty thousand seven hundred fifty. We said that included five thousand. Yeah. yeah. So now we're what is it thirty three? Thirty three. Yeah. Thirty three thousand seven hundred fifty in undesignated at this point unless we plus the four thousand plus the four thousand one sixty six in the historic reserve what, what was it again thirty uh thirty three right thirty three seven fifty yeah forty one sixty six historic okay does that answer your question George it does it's not I, I'm just thinking of other affordable housing projects that might come yeah through us at that point but it's not you tomorrow unless there's other taxes or other Income that comes in from the state, which we don't know about at this point. Yes, and we will get a little. We just don't know what that level is. Uh, other discussion? I, I'd still like to consider funding it to leave more of that undisputed. But I don't know exactly what the be. For all the other ones we talked about, could come back. I mean, they could. They've come back. This is the third time they could come back in the spring. It's really critical. We're not going to spend all this money before anyone anyway, or June. But I don't know. I know it's political with all the other money they're going after and everything. So. But I think this is the last bite. Um, I think we've made them come back. It was enough times. This um, this is, this is, again, this is not a preliminary phase of the project where everything's kind of swirling around and uncertain. They've got a pretty hardened budget now. This is what they need. 
to make things work, I would mean, just do it. There's no more property up that village hill for affordable housing or for any kind of housing. I don't think, I think this maxes it up. Okay. Yeah, and the co-housing project. The co-housing project that's being built. Um, but what happens if they don't get approved from the state funding? We get it back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Correct, sir? Uh, if, unless they feel that, that gap was a little bit. <clears throat> they can't do the project without the state funding. Right. Any further discussion? Okay, so the motion on the floor is to uh, check out with 250000 for the North Commons uh, Community Builders Affordable Housing Project on Village Hill. All those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, abstaining? I guess so. Okay, so it's an 8 to 0 to 1. One of suspension. All right. Uh, so moving on to the Hampshire Heights playground, to the housing authority. The uh, is there a motion to check out with two hundred thousand for the playground? Second. Second. Right. Second. Right. Uh, discussion. Good to go. So the motion is 200,000 for the Hampshire Heights Playground. All those in favor? All those opposed? It passes unanimously, eight to zero with one recusal. Recusal. Mm -hmm. recusal. Mm -hmm. uh, no outburst from the audience. <laughs> quiet in the audience, please. Uh, uh, where are we? We. Uh, uh, We've got one left, right? Is that just, just the brook? Have we done anything else? The Forbes. Or did we order? We didn't put Forbes. Forbes, not yet. So oh, it, we have this, the restoration. This is the restoration. Okay. So the motion on the, uh, is there a motion to check out with 250000 for National Honor Brook restoration? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Sorry, I have a oh, yeah. vote. Do I'll think about for a second. No, no, no. Just go. If, it, if, it, if the property changes hands and the city doesn't do anything to it, is it accessible to public use that day? Or does it work? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. You're going to try and get around it? I was going to say, you're Sorry, would you like to start? <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed, it is unanimous. All right. So we have authorized, can, sir, can you do the math? Um, we are... $928,834. Can you say that one more time? $928,834. $928,834. Which, once again, leaves us with 4166 in the historic reserve and 33,750 in the undesignated. So that's 37, 37 something thousand uh, to be added on by amount that we do not know. Do we have any idea what that might be, Sarah? The additional? None. None? Okay. But we should know soon, correct? We, we should. We, we should have known already, have known. And, but we should know. Yeah, we had just spent it. <laughs> <laughs> Goats. Goats. Okay. All right. That was well done, folks. Um, conditions. Do we want to do that now while they were fresh in our head, uh, so that Sarah can sort of work on work her wordsmith magic, and um, when we come back next in uh, in two weeks? If, if people don't feel like discussing them now, you can always email them to me. Just don't talk to me. I'll never, do it. I'll never do it when you ask me that whole book. Anybody else? <laughs> I was say, let's just brainstorm. Are there any of these in conditions? conditions? Okay, yeah. I would just as soon spend the extra yeah, 20 minutes now if we yeah. get it someplace. Why don't we do that now? And as we go home, if people think of additional conditions, we can certainly spring those on Sarah and discuss them also when we come back in two weeks. So, so uh, conditions. Let's. 
go through these. Uh, historic Northampton. We always condition them coming back and with progress reports. That's just not a condition, right? Uh, so every grantee is required to submit an annual progress report. Okay, so we don't need to. Do we as a committee ever look at those? Or is um, it just reviewed at the staff? They are all uh, placed in the project folders that are available online. We do get them for the most part. Some of them are very, very brief, just a few sentence statements. And a lot of projects don't even make it a whole year. And we can always ask if we're really interested in you know, folks to come and present to us at one of our meetings a year from now or, or something. We have that right for us, Sarah? Yeah. And I'm sure they'd be happy to come and yeah, do that. I have to go, but I have one condition that is out of order. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the golf course, if that could just be, I assume, when that is made public land, that it's put on the website clearly that that is public land so people can figure it out. Go out. Okay. We will see you at least one more meeting. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, okay. Thank you. Thanks, David. Any other conditions that we can think of? Who has to run at nine o'clock at night? Are you going to the casino? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta catch a train in New Haven. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, see how it makes sense. All right, we're still in historic North Hampton. Any conditions we want to set? on that and also remember there's two opportunities to set conditions some of some of them are appropriate to be included within the council orders um, others can be placed within the contracts themselves thank you sir all right on to the affordable housing one the glendale road and small home did, for the other habitat projects on glendale road did we have any conditions Housing folks, do we need to do anything on that? No? We always do the affordability. Yeah, we require the affordability restriction on habitat, but just because it's habitat, that they do Okay. Uh, North Commons, the community builders. Conditions? It says on the, on the front, front page, um, it's anticipated that approximately 35 acres of undeveloped land adjacent to blah, 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 will be preserved through a conservation restriction with the city. Can we put anything down to strongly encourage that to happen? Or are we out of, out of line in doing that? No, no, submit it as close and affordable housing and um, open space application so that that's something the committee can require. How do people feel about that? So the requirement would be a 35 acres of undeveloped land will be preserved through a conservation restriction. That's approximately. Yeah. That's what it's, it's it says. It says approximately. Yeah. We, we would hold the conservation restriction? No. no. Mm -hmm. who, who was? City. Uh, the city or city. I, I meant we as the city? Um, not necessarily. Okay. They, they could uh, work with the land trust, but the city is probably the most likely. So that might go to Kestrel. That could yeah, go to it would, Kestrel. probably it would be either Kestrel or the conservation. Okay. So the release of the CPA funds is contingent upon that filing of a CR or just some? Uh, I probably wouldn't be comfortable doing that just because that's such a lengthy process. Um, but it's something that could be included in the contract that we can go back to later. Okay, we're good with that. Okay, and we'll be voting on these in two weeks so no need to be voting on those at this point any other conditions for the uh yeah. Yeah. any other conditions for the north Co uh, commons project and the, the affordability restriction yeah. Yeah. yeah haven't we done lived a lot more on conditions in the past on on this no well we've always included an in affordability restriction but okay um, is, that, is that the only is that the only one? Mm. Uh, generally, yeah. yeah. At least for yeah, for the last yeah. um, whatever it is, project that's tied to anything else on North Commons? The um, there are so many levels of the housing here. There's three units of this and five units yeah. of that and seven. Are those approximate also, or do they 
have to report to the city that they've actually done that with you know poor people with mental health diagnosis and things of that nature do we I don't think, I believe we have micromanaged to that so, extent. Yeah, so the affordability yes. restriction would have to be specific to the percentage AMI that the units are limited to. So I, for the, the contract, I would, uh, I would prepare exactly what was included in the application. Okay. Thank you. Anything else on that? Okay, where are we? Hampshire Heights Playground? Conditions. I'm still um, I'm puzzled by the budget on this uh, because, again, we happen to have this other playground of the same size that's being proposed for North Commons that is considerably less expensive. Um, and I realize we, it sounds like we can't ask for more detail on budget. So um, I guess. I, there, there's a condition and there's sort of a, uh, a nudge, right? Recommendation. Yeah, I mean, I think, a condition. Yeah. You know, I know we got money back on the stained glass window. Is there ever, has money ever been returned on any other project? Uh, small amounts here and there. The stained glass window was the most Yeah. Um, I have a feeling you can always find more equipment. I so know. I think that's looking for money back is. It's going to be hard looking for money well spent is a different matter. Right. One project came back a dollar thirty seven. Well And it's the same designer. That's the other thing that I think is really odd about it for the two playgrounds. It's the same landscape architect. So it just I don't really understand it. But um, I don't know. Well, in the past, we have not we have funded projects without conditions, but with requests, correct? Or suggestions? Yeah, I and mean, we can communicate things to the applicant. Maybe we can think how to word that in a written letters before. Yeah, yeah. in a way that encourages them to think about some of the these these budget stuff. As well. as so, could we recommend that the housing authority meets with? staff from either the school department or the parks and rec who has some experience with playground development just julia your thoughts sure um, we can i don't know if there is such a person there the operations manager but somebody has <clears throat> there's not a playground at the farm the fields in florence yes, there is. yep so there that's is. fairly relevant and recent um where's the other more recent the one that burnt down that we're rebuilding. Uh, uh, Bridge Street School. Yeah. The vandals. Jackson Street. That's a Jackson. Jackson Street. Jackson Street School, but for Parks and Rec, the one we just built is Florence Fields, and then we just had to redo um, the Safety Village Playground. Oh, really? Oh, uh, right. Yeah, it, it was burned. So. Very, but those are the most recent ones. That's a very different kind of beast. Yeah, um, but um, you know, Public Works has a lot of experience with installation because we always we almost always have public works do the installation and and parks and rec does a lot of purchasing we have plans to expand the playground at florence fields hint <laughs> um, yes. and, and you know and, and i think we all appreciate that the housing authority has made this move because they housing authority hasn't really come before the cpa before has it for anything not for new housing um, so we want to keep them. Right. There are other houses. They could do something up in Florence. Um, so maybe if they, we were encouraging them to meet with other city departments, because um, I think they do tend to be a little bit insular. So it might. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's fine. Encourage that. Encourage them to meet with the people who do playgrounds in yeah. the city. Yeah. And it's a mix of school and that's yeah. right. Sarah, can you try to put that into some sort of words sure. for us for two weeks from now? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, so are we we're in agreement that we're not conditioning the money, we're simply going to no. send a letter out. Is that correct? Yeah. Encouraging them to utilize this valuable resource. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Sarah's got the, <laughs> perfect. Sarah's got the, yeah. got the language down. Yeah. 
I'm not sure if I like utilize. Or it's, I, I'll, I'll do a little more crafty, but I'll, I'll include it in there. Okay. Let's see, and we dealt with the uh, National Honor Brook restoration, correct? Mm -hmm. I'm putting the condition that it be open as soon as the title goes to mm -hmm. the city that it be open for public use. Um, so, master plan we're not dealing with. We dealt with Glendale Road, North Commons, Hampshire Heights, goes we're not dealing with, Historic North Hampton. We are good to go on conditions. And we have to check out of the supermarket. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, we have. Oh my God. Wow. Oh my. We're not done. <laughs> other business, not. And any, other further, <laughs> any other further comments on this round? Yes? No? You've got our time. Uh, let's remember that one thing that's useful for us, for all of us, I think, is when we come back in two weeks to uh, have a little time to offer constructive suggestions for the process. So rather do that now, maybe you can mull that over and if we can think of ways to make, to make the uh, Funding cycle go a little smoother. Let's, let's, uh, let's try to remember that. So when we come back in two weeks, we'll be looking at conditions. We'll be uh, what else? Uh, 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 reviewing the draft council order. Reviewing the draft council order. So it should be a pretty quick, a quick meeting. By then, theoretically, we'll know what the state surplus money is in as well. But we thought we would know that tonight as well. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I already heard one good suggestion about the process, you know, and it's kind of silly, but the camera location, because that's two for other boards too. Sarah, I wonder if there's any way you could just follow up with that. Um, is there a way to switch this camera so that it could be operated by staff or turned on? I, no, there's, there's not a way to do that. Um, no one has an open media established. Well, one. so, but there's got to be a way to do it because North, Northampton Open Media it's, it's simply some. Yeah, a non handed open meeting would have to staff the meeting. But they're not staffing it. Well, we'll talk about. It. I don't yeah, want to drill the, down. So the only that. the only meetings that are um, that are available are some planning board meetings and yeah. possibly not even anymore. And city council wants it. I, they have limited resources. So there was a cameraman here from Northampton Open Media when Julie looked yeah. at those. No, that's not this. It's just right. This camera. Th this yeah, so the, this was the only option. Okay. Okay. For the we could make a request that the two meetings, a cycle where we have public input and presentation, that they staff that for those two meetings. That would be great because those are the two meetings. I mean, what you see when you're watching it is every everybody sitting and looking at someone, and you know if if the person is showing something or if they're. You, you hear the emotion, but you don't see it. It's, it's just helpful to see people as they speak. And it's also disrespectful not to see people as they come up and speak publicly. So it's funny to watch. And, then I and that, could, that could get our YouTube hits from two to like four. <laughs> 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 and it's all about likes and... Uh, Sarah, is that something you could make a request I, for? I can't make a request or hand to open media. It's completely separate from the city. Okay. Um, but I can I so at least ask. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? Is there a motion to adjourn? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.